Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Attribution of Ops inside of Houdini and in this one will be very important, we'll be learning about actually copying, rotating, orienting our copies on geometry because previously we were just uh, talking about normals and whatnot, now we will learn about new attributes that's the up vector and the new actual attribute that actually controls the rotation which is ROT, rotation attribute. We will create a simple setup that will be controlling our geometry and we can see that we can randomly orient our geometry based on some sort of uh, simple rules. Uh, all of this will be diving inside explaining how it works and of course you will learn how to control your attributes. Before I begin I just want to say that if you are interested in supporting the channel please consider subscribing to the Patreon because it has all the files and assets and the scenes so you can follow along. And without further ado, let's jump inside and learn more things about attributes and bobs inside of Houdini. All right, so let's start talking about rotations and orientations. We drop geometry node. Let's start with a grid. Uh, let's drop a squab. And let's copy to points and see what we get. And of course, we get some, well, squabs copied on the grid, right? So uh, nothing spectacular here just yet, because um, if you remember, the copy to points actually copies our geometry based on the normals of our grid. And of course, our normals, if we enable primitive normals, you'll see that they basically uh, look straight at the top. And well, as the name suggests, copy to points, copies them and our squabs look straight at the top. Of course, we can transform. Uh, let me just enable the backend instance so it kind of works a little bit faster. If we transform our initial squab, so to speak, right? If I make it slightly smaller, you will see that it is oriented and everything looks fine and, you know, it works fine. So next up, let's actually talk about the sphere. So here it is, and of course, if we copy the points, you will see that our squab seems to be working as well. So all is fine there as well. Let me just make it a little bit smaller so we can see. So they are oriented against our sphere and everything looks to be working just fine. So when do we actually get into the trouble is if we, for example, uh, have this circle, here it is. And yeah, let's make a little bit more divisions. And if we copy the points, just the circle, you will see that effectively our squabs are not oriented in any sort of way or fashion. However, it's not particularly a big problem because if you watch the previous videos, you will see if we do the polyframe and we write the tangents as the normals, because we can do whatever we want, right? Let's see the normals of the points are now oriented towards the center of our thing. And of course, here we are. Let's disable the pack and instance so we can see, whoops, so we can see uh, the colors. However, you will immediately see, and if I actually make a grid, make the grid relatively small, actually, uh, Okay, so we copy it here, whoops. If we copy the grids, right, you will see that despite the fact that we have the normals and everything is working fine, they are rotating, rotating against some other axis that we do not see right now, but you'll see that if I increase the amount of divisions, you'll see that, yep, we have a little bit of a problem they do rotate uh, against some axis. So how do we fix that? We actually create a new attribute. Uh, we start attribute create, drop it here. And to, to control this rotation around itself, we have to explicitly tell Houdini that we need another attribute that's called up. And that attribute is not a float, it's a vector and the value will be one in the y-axis and if I press enter you'll see that immediately we fixed our problem and of course if I drop our squabs I think here you'll see that 
indeed our scops are finally rotated the way we want them. So how does it actually work? Let's do another grid. Here, here we are, we already have one. And let's work with big hats for a second, orient them like that, copy the points, pipe here, and we see our pigs. I will disable the shader, and here we are. So if I drop an attribute drop and place it uh, in the grid, and in fact, I think the interesting part will be if we actually scatter, because remember, if we scatter geometry, it actually removes pretty much all of the information and we're left with virtually nothing. And same deal goes with our sphere. So if I go and copy the points on a sphere, okay? So um, if I scatter on a sphere, you will see that immediately, let me just decrease the amount of points. Uh, immediately we see that the orientation is broken. Let me move this away. And if you remember previous videos, we can actually do the facet and we can propagate the normals, uh, post compute normals, here we are. And of course, a scatter now uh, takes into the account the normals that we had in the sphere and they get propagated to the scatter. And well, basically the whole point I'm trying to make is that it now is oriented just fine. Again, if I disable the post compute normals, there are no normals, right? So they orient it just in some uh, kind of wacky way. They are not oriented, they're just literally copied and they just, you know, float in the, uh, in the air, so to speak. And of course, if we enable the post compute normals, you'll see that indeed they start to be oriented. And of course, uh, let's bring back the rotation so it's kind of aligned a little bit better. So the thing, if I create attribute create, right? If I uh, right here, if I do the up, again, up vector and make the value of one. So this looks to be working just fine. However, if we drop an attribute pop, you'll see in a second what we're doing. And we go inside, uh, we actually can control the rotation. So for now, the normals are being controlled by, well, we pipe normals into normals, nothing is happening, obviously. And the copy to points, it works as it worked previously. However, the interesting part here is that the actual attribute that controls the rotation is called rot, as in rotation. So let's create a bind export and the bind export will be named as a rot. However, the type will not be even the three float vector. It will be actually four float vector. So a four float vector is a quaternion. So just to be completely basic for this video, uh, what I'm trying to say is the four values that we have here, the first three will be actual normal. That will be orienting the geometry. And the fourth value uh, will be the angle at which the geometry is rotated against the axis of the normal. Now, this might sound kind of like, uh, what? <laughs> but uh, let me just showcase so you can basically see what we're doing. Anyway, so uh, to actually have the floats, I mean, uh, vector four, we can create, uh, con convert vector three, vector to vector four. Here it is. So the first three values will be the normals, right? The fourth value will be a float. So basically we can rotate it already here or we can create a constant and rotate it here. And as you can see immediately, uh, something interesting is going on because we are not just orienting those against normals, we're also are able to control. As you can see, it basically rotates, right? Let's, let's uh, concentrate on this squab here. It rotates against the axis of the normal it is oriented against. So again, here we have points. The points have normals. They are being, uh, these squabs are being copied to 
this particular normal, they are oriented against this normal. However, they are rotated around the axis of the normal. That is exactly what's happening here. Again, let me just showcase. Here it is. And of course, you can make it go further or not go further. So there you go. Of course, all of this will work with our, whoops, with our copy to points here as well. So let's just try to make it a little bit more random. First, let's create the normals and let's actually not create the normals. Let's just write them as a facet and we do the post compute normals. So it's kind of like working better. And we go inside of our attribute VOP after we do the scatter. Let's make it a little bit more random just to make it a little bit more interesting. So we go inside the attribute VOP. Again, binds export. So we kind of export the attribute that we have. Again, it's called rot as in rotation. Vector four. We do the vector to vector four. We write normals here. And here, here it is. Um, this that value four, it doesn't need to be actually be just a constant. We can do the randomization with our beloved noise. For this one, I think, uh, whatever, let's do the Vorena noise, right? So we pipe the P into position. Let's preview it. Uh, pipe the distance into the CD just to preview what's going on. And as you can see, here we have values that are close to zero. Here we have values that are close to one. So if we have this result, we can increase or decrease frequency. Basically, everything here is nothing new. We already talked about that. Anyway, so we get the distance into value four. And as you can see immediately, they are rotated a little bit differently for each point. So if we transform it kind of like this, 90 degrees, I'll make the piggy a little bit smaller, you will see that just to make it a little bit more obvious uh, sits here so we can uh, visualize it a little bit better. You will see oops, that indeed our piggies are looking, you know, randomly. So this pig that has pretty much zero, it's not uh, rotated against its axis in the normal it's not rotated against the taxes. However, the piggies that are closer to one are getting rotated. So the way it actually works is this value four rotation is not being in degrees, but it is in radians. So let me just showcase, I'll write another constant. This constant is sort of a degree um, a degree gets converted to radians, and we can see that, well, pretty much nothing is happening. However, if we want to rotate it, right? If you know anything about radians or anything about conversion of trigonometry or whatever, just basically what I'm saying is 57 degrees is sort of like one radiant. And let me just showcase constant, make it one and exactly the same rotation. Again, zero degrees is zero radians, right? 57 degrees is one radian in this calculation here. So basically, if you're uh, more into, you know, degrees, it doesn't really matter, especially if you're rotating it using noise. However, you will see that we will have to multiply uh, if we are, again, if we are assuming that this uh, noise value, and we assume this is a degree, not a radiant, just for our personal, you know, preference, uh, we can basically multiply it by 57 if you want to see uh, rotated by 90 degrees. Or indeed, we can make just 200 or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Basically, this multiplier, we can make it a just a constant multiplier. Let me see. Okay, so we multiply pipe it here, product here. Right now it's uh, multiplied by nothing, but we can promote this parameter. And of course we can get outside into the attribute VOP. 
and we can now multiply it by any number we want. And as you can see, our peaks are getting rotated, so everything is working fine. And of course, we can, I don't know, promote this, promote parameter, promote offset, or something uh, to control our noise here. So if we increase the frequency, you will see that uh, obviously we are controlling our rotations uh, using this particular point attribute, the four float rotation. And the color, in this case, does nothing. I can delete it because it, uh, we are using it just for the preview. And if I go back to our piggy, we can re-enable our shaders and here we are. We have some sort of a random way of orienting our geometry. So again, just to sum up, just to review what we're doing. The interesting part about copying and orienting our geometry here is that despite the fact that by default we can basically copy things using just normals and we can promote normals even through scatter using the facet post compute normals right it will understand that we want to orient our geometry and copy using normals however if we want to rotate somehow against that normal we have to introduce new attribute that will help the rotation in our case for example this is attribute that is attribute called up. It's a default attribute from Houdini. Again, you'll have to make it a vector. You'll have to uh, place a value of 1 in the y-axis or in the z-axis. Depends on how you orient your geometry. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. I'm not saying like this is how you must do it. This is the workflow to do it, but how exactly you want to do it is up to you. So there you go. And of course, if we want to randomly orient some sort of copies, we can do that by having some normals. So with scatter, we go to our attribute. And again, you can disregard this. We created that, you, you know that already. So the interesting, the only interesting part here is that the attribute, the default Houdini attribute that is controlling the rotation of the copies is called ROT, R-O-T. And it's a four float vector and we can make the four float vector from a three float vector in our case we connect normal to the vector here and the fourth value it can be arbitrary like this we can do whatever we want here or we can make it random using noise like here so there you go so my advice to you would be to play with those setups to actually get the grasp how it works uh, what on earth vector 4 is, how to control it using normals, up vector, how to use the new rot rotation attribute that we just discovered, and how to maybe use something to control the random rotation or just, you know, populate your scene. This might be a little bit weird because I understand that generally speaking, more or less you were maybe understanding that vectors can be two values, three values, but four values is a little bit new. So there you go. And hopefully this was useful if you are interested in learning more about attributes or Houdini in general, or basically 3D in general, because we will be covering more topics. Don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like the video, if you learned something, press the like button. If you have ideas, suggestions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I try to read all the comments and respond. Um, I hope you're having a good time learning new things and hopefully I'll see you in the next videos. Goodbye.